Hi, I'm Steven Morawski, a developer advocate here at Microsoft. In this video, I'm going to show you how VSTS can build and deploy your Python application into Azure. In this video, we'll walk through a sample build and release pipeline for a Python Flask application. We'll build our application with VSTS, create a Docker container configured to run our application, and upload that container to a private registry. Then we'll see how VSTS reports unit test results and enables containerization of our application. In the release process, we'll see how we can automate the release process to multiple environments and supporting different quality steps. We're going to dive right in and take a look at the build and release process for a Python Flask application. After we've taken a tour of the build and release process, we'll make a change to the application and follow it through the pipeline. All right, we're in Visual Studio Team Services here, and we have a build for our Python application. And we're going to take a look at the build process here. And the first thing that we're going to note is that our agent queue is the hosted Linux preview. Uh, this provides us an environment to, it's actually a Docker container that uh, has all the build tools that we need to build our Python application. So Python 2, Python, Python 3 are there. And then on that build agent, we're going to execute a couple of steps. There's a shell script that will go and run our unit tests. Then we'll publish those test results to VSTS so that we can see in our build results how our unit tests went. From there, because Python is an interpreted language, we don't actually have to build a uh, DLL or an EXE or a WAR or a JAR or any of those other artifacts. So we can actually just build our image right from the application that we have. So we've got a Docker file in, this, in source control, and we'll use that to build an image of our application. And from there, we'll push that up to the Azure Container Registry. And we're going to stage out some files that we have in our repository that will help us then deploy this to Azure App Service in our release. Speaking of release, we'll go take a look at the release definition. And we'll go look at edit so we can see the different steps. And this is the release pipeline visualization. And here's where we can see that we can wire up a particular build result. We have a continuous deployment trigger. So this means every successful build, um, and you can filter by branch, Every successful build is going to go out to our dev environment. And to go out to the dev environment, we have just one task here. And that is uh, we're going to publish out to Azure App Service. And we have a template that was published, as, uh, that was published out to uh, as part of our build process. And this will spin up a, an existing or, or a new Azure App Service environment and deploy our application into it. Back in our pipeline, we have a QA step. Now this step won't actually happen until after we've had successful deployment to dev and we have a pre-deployment approver required. That means somebody's gonna have to go in and say, yes, this bill is ready to go to QA. Our QA environment has one other task. We're going to do a quick web performance load test and validate that our site is uh, taking requests and returning back results within a tolerance for the performance of that site. This is also a place where you could do other types of tests if you would like. But for example, for this example, we're just going to do a quick load test. Once we complete that, we're going to get prompted again before we go on to our production environment. And the production environment is going to look very much like the others, where we have a deployment out to Azure App Service. This is going to go to our production environment. And from there, everything will be good, and we can go on, we can go on out and have our release party. Let's go and take a look and make some changes to our source code, and we'll follow it through this process. So I'm in Visual Studio Code. And I've got my project loaded up. And again, we've got a real simple Flask application. And I'm just going to change a link. 
Right now I've got a link that points to uh, developer.microsoft.com uh, advocates, which has a list of all the developer advocates at Microsoft. And we're gonna change that and we're gonna point it to the Channel 9 Connect channel, about, uh, all about, which has all the videos for the different uh, Connect conferences, including this one. And we'll save our changes. Go to our command line because that's where I like to do my git. We have one modified file. We'll add that. Updated our link. And we'll push our changes. This is going to trigger a build. So we'll hop back over to Visual Studio Team Services, to our builds, and see what's going on. So we can see we've already got something in progress. So Visual Studio Team Services picks up immediately that a change has happened and starts our build process. So it starts off by grabbing the source out of source control, and now it's running uh, the little shell script I have to run the Python tests, and then publishes our test results, and we're already on to building our Docker image. Once our image is built, that will get pushed up to our Azure Container Registry, and then we'll stage out our Azure templates, our ARM templates, and we now have a successful build. This should trigger a release, and so we can hop over to our releases tab and take a look at what's going on. We can see we have a release underway. We can see our dev environment has started its release. Take a look at the logs so we can follow along. So the agent starts by downloading those templates that we published as part of our build. And then it's going to use those templates with the Azure deployment task to make sure that the app service is present and then to get the Docker container that we just built installed and running. Now that our uh, deployment is finished, we're going to hop over to our Azure portal so that we can go take a look at the application that we deployed. And we've got the URL in our Azure App Service configuration for our development environment. So we'll load that up and our application is there and loaded. Now that we've got, we've validated, we've got our, our application published, back in our release, we've got a notification. And that's a pre-deployment approval that's required to move on to our QA environment. So once, we've, once we're satisfied that what's in development is ready for the next phase of, uh, of testing or inspection, we can approve it. And I'm going to approve that. And so now our build agent is going to go and run a similar deployment, deploy out to an, uh, another environment in Azure, and then we're going to run our load test to validate that we are there and taking uh, and it's taking requests within proper tolerances. And now that our load test is completed, we can take a quick glance and see the results of that. There's a little output put from the load test itself, as well as a link to the specific load test results, which you can go take a look at uh, should you so desire. I'm happy that everything ran properly, and because I'm kind of a happy-go-lucky guy, we're going to approve this release for moving on to our production environment. So we'll approve that. And once more, our agent is going to go off, uh, find an available agent, pull down the templates that we need to deploy, 
And now instead of deploying to the QA environment, it's going to deploy to our production environment. And now that this deployment is complete, we can go over to our Azure portal and we're going to go take a look at our production environment. Get the app service. And go take a look at the site that was deployed. And we can see our application was successfully deployed out to our production environment. And now it's time to go out for our release party. Now that we've seen Visual Studio Team Services build and deploy our Flask application, we can head over to docs.microsoft.com where we can find an article on configuring the Azure App Service to use Docker containers. We've got a number of other great sessions on new features and workflows in Visual Studio Team Services on Channel 9's Connect channel. And Microsoft Virtual Academy is there to help us continue our learning. Thanks.